Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And uh, I'm just on my way home now, from, from Dennis's office. Uh, let's answer these quick two messages then we're going to get off. I'm trying to think what we can speak about. Dennis, I'll call you when I set off. Alright, it'll be morning. Alright, I know, all right, okay. Right, uh, I'd like to do a video on, on steroids, but I don't really know a lot about it because I think there's a big problem at the moment in boxing with, with steroids. Michelle, I found it, it's in my car, so it's okay, you don't have to look for it. Uh, I think there's a big problem with steroids in boxing at the moment, that's what I think. And, uh, so I'm trying to think who we can call. Now I'm not saying my pal Bunny, who's on steroids, because he, he says he's sorry. He says he's natural, and I believe him because I spent a lot of time here when he was training. Yui, strength and condition for Pulaf fight or not Pulaf? Was it Pulaf? No. Yeah, Pulaf. So we'll bring Bunny. See what Bunny's got to say. Alright, so here we go. Bunny Johnson, but we call him, his name's Bernard, but he's known as Bunny because I think his dad had about 20 kids or something, so like a bunny rabbit. Hello, how are you doing? 99. Sorry, mate, I forgot, uh, battery, camera went flat, Bunny. I'm just doing some press-ups, Paul, sorry. Oh, you just, oh, right. <laughs> How are you doing, are you all right? Hello, Pal. Nice uh, to see you. Very nice to hear from you. I would hope to listen. No, I've just, I've just uh, finished it. Uh, I'm up at, I work up at Dennis's don't I? on a Monday morning. Yeah, I'm sure you're going to get a bit of a break from the boxing. Yeah, you know, I'm going to get a bit of a break from the boxing. Yeah, you know, I'm going to get a bit of a break from the boxing. Oh, Costa. Well, he should have been there, shouldn't he, at 12 o'clock, Dennis, but he's, he's got dragged into another meeting, so we're all given slots now, aren't we? <laughs> you know, and then he never sticks, he never sticks to them anyway, does he? So, yeah, there's no organisation, is he? You know what he's like, but it means, well... You know what Dennis is like, as long as he's sat there with a Costa coffee, or a t is it tea we honey? He likes his, his smoothies. But Manuka honey, that that's the one, isn't it? Manuka honey, yeah, but that's 16 quid a jar, bunny, isn't it? Well, he'll drink that all day for that, but he's dipping the shop for it. Oh, yeah, well, like I said, when I, he says get me some Manuka honey, I went, and the woman said 16 quid, I said. Well, that's the last time I'll turn around and say I'll go to shop and get some money. I'll get that, you're all right, yeah. I bought cars for less. Look at traffic here in Sheffield. Uh, how are you is keep? Still is Dennis still training? training? Yeah, I think he's training with Richard Towers now. I think I think he does a bit with him. Yeah. Well, Richard will be pushing him if he is. Richard Amazon, doesn't he? He's like Sergeant Major, isn't he? Right, so that's how it's got to be. When they go to the gym, when they go to the gym and they walk through the door, they're supposed to see somebody like me or Richard Towers and shit this thing. No, yeah, well, Richard's just scary guy anyway. Big six foot eight, seventeen stone muscle man coming at you who can punch. You're gonna get out of the way, aren't you? What the, what you do, bunny? You choke him out, don't you? Yeah, hey, it's uh, what I like to do is we're a new person. I like to pick an him and see what he can do. Let him show me what he can do. And then you show him what you can do. <laughs> Olympic medalist, what was that guy? He couldn't do as many pull ups as you. Well, I've seen Frotch do 32 pull ups straight away, wide grip. Is that good? Yeah, that's good, yeah. Yeah, for his back, yeah. I don't know how many sets, cause I did, I've seen David Day do 30. <laughs> Wide grip pull up, so they hard, aren't they? Then? Yeah, you've got to go do it every, twice a week, can't you? That, or is it once a week? 
them as a boxer when, when he finished boxing. He, he was on a he was on a rest. He was resting for weeks on end. Then the losers of the has got. What, why do you want to do that when you finish your fight? Yeah. All right. I've, I've had a couple of days off, but then getting that gym and leathering all week, every week till your next fight. Yeah. Yeah. You don't. You don't. You recover for a couple of days. You don't do. I found that, you know, when I were a gym orderly, I seemed to be stuck on a on 95 key bench press for ages, you know, trying to do an under key bench press, but only 11 stock. But the, I, I found that if I didn't train my chest for like a month, I went back down to 85. So eventually, once I spoke to somebody who were experienced, they're only like 20, 24 year old then, I managed to do it and then get by that and, and keep the same body weight. You've got to keep going and shocking muscle like this, right? Yeah, it's like spending it, but you don't put them out of you. Ask Dennis if you've got one of them old chest tech bandits for them. Chest tech? What a bull worker! <laughs> Do you remember them bull workers from the 70s? He made 20 million, didn't he, that guy? Uh, bull worker. Everybody had a bull worker, didn't they? Do you have one, Bunny? Ah, uh, I've got other sorts of people now. I've got another snake belt. Snake belt. <laughs> right, uh, I want to ask you, Bunny, what you think at the moment? Obviously, we, that being your industry, what you think about the current situation with is it six out of the top ten guys at heavyweight have all failed dope tests something like that or eight out of the top 25 what's going on bunny if, uh, if eight out of 25 have been done for steroids then no, eight out of 25 yeah if eight out of 25 have been done for steroids then at least another centre and I've got away with it. Is that what you think, Bunny? So we look so there's a problem, is the Bunny? Yeah, it's uh, you won't go back to Mama Dali days, you didn't feel them down even muscles, did you? No, but they all want big body. I mean nowadays you've got twenty stone men throwing hundred punches around. That's why you don't see a good night these days, mate, because you feel muscle bound. Yeah, but not all of Jarrell Miller failed free drug tests in one day. And he, he wouldn't say he's muscle bound, he's big, isn't he, but... I mean, it's not only for muscle that he's taking it, is it? It's for, it's for uh, endurance. Endurance, man, that's what he's making it for, so he can go that extra mile. Yeah. It's cheating, isn't it? Just, why don't they just do it right? Why don't they do it right? It's, it's so easy. I look yeah. at me, I'm dragging it out with you, and I'm climbing out of it. Yeah. I do want to test the gym. And I don't, I, I, I won't say, do you know what they say all these, when they go up and have all these chickens and, and beef and, I, 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 I don't eat nothing what's got, what's been killed. I won't eat nothing there. What, don't you eat meat, Bunny? They don't eat meat, man, yeah. Well, what food. did you have when you were in camp with Peter and them, when you used to go to restaurants and that, what did you eat? Well, you used to go out with Huey, didn't you? What did, what did you and Huey eat? Well, I'll just tell you where he's gone. Right, what kind of diet where he's gone? If he's got feet, we don't eat. If he's got fit, we'll have him for a dinner. And if he's in a shell, we'll smash his fucking head in. Peter was telling me that uh, you he was trying to... Uh, he'd stop eating meat with you. And you, you were up, and he were doing... But you were eating fish, weren't you? I've got everybody in gym on it. What, Marshall, even Savannah? Savannah, uh, David, David, David Adelaide. Yeah, David Adelaide, a lot of future stuff. He will let me. Have hey, buddy, do you remember, right? When, when David Adelaide, you know, was just had his debut on BT Sport. Well, he did a camp with us, didn't he, bunny? And he, and everybody, right, were raving about this kid when he was sparring. He used to set about everybody, didn't he, Bunny? Well, he got told to calm down. He, ca he set about that American kid, didn't he, that Cassius? Right? He was massive, wasn't he? And he, he was 13 and 0, wasn't he, Bunny? Yeah, 
<laughs> and he set about him and David, young David, but only uh he was only amateur then, wasn't he? He was 20 year old, he amateur. Hey? We couldn't watch him on leash, he got warned. Go on, on leash. He, 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 was, he, he was terrible. He'll man. win a world title, him, right? And let me tell you this. Him and Daniel Debar used to knock lumps on each other before Daniel turned pro. Now, uh, say what you want you know about it. You know why he'll win some of him? You know why he'll get on in life? Why? Because he's worth it. Willing to put that after work in. Yeah, he put, yeah, he's got a champion's mentality, him, David Adelaide. And I, I would tell him, I was raving about him, and I was like, Dennis, you need to sign him. And I'll, I'll just tell it straight. When we were in Bulgaria, I don't think that Dennis went above and beyond to sign him. Yeah, I, I, I saw him. We, we all know what happened, but I don't think he went that extra yard like he did for Ricky Atten. But Ricky Atten were already established, wasn't he? And I just don't yeah. think that Dennis went that extra yard. And obviously Frank Warren, he blew everybody out at water and signed David Adelaide. And, I, and I've, got, uh, I've got nothing but respect for David Adelaide because he didn't just jump in with all them offers that he were getting. He finished his degree, didn't he? His law degree, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He's one of the nicest yeah. kids you're ever going to meet in boxing. He's so yeah, polite, it's unbelievable, isn't he? Uh, he's gonna be he's gonna be next big thing, isn't he, Bunny? Yeah, he's uh, he good. You don't see Joshua telling everybody about them stories from sparring him. Can he crack him, can he bunny? Isn't he a body good type of tool in that? Yeah. Sparring Tyson, yeah. He's, he's literally, that's what you just said, he's, he is the future, he's the future, eh? And do you know what, what's amazing, right? What I find amazing, Mick Hennessy. Mick Hennessy didn't go uh, uh, all out for him. I'm surprised Mick didn't go out all... He was on a plate for him in Bulgaria, unless there was something going behind the scenes where they were always going to go with Frank anyway. Because they were never going to go to Eddie Hearn, never. Never in a million years were they going to go to Eddie, so he's, he's gone to Frank Warren and I wish him well. I do, I do, I wish that. He's 21 in it, Bunny, I'll just turn 22. You turn 22 now, if he wants to have, you know yourself, I wouldn't put them out, there's no more with boxes, it takes all their life. Hey, listen, do you know when he gets to a certain status and he's earning mega bucks, he'll be ringing you, Bunny, because he got on with you, didn't he? I, I don't want to go, I want to go with him while he's, he's got mega bucks, I'll, I'll fuck up. Well, he's up, <laughs> he, was, he had a few quid before he turned pro, didn't he? Because I think he's quite smart as well, isn't he? In a nice he's car and that, isn't he? He's a very, very clever lad. Uh, he's, very, he's from a well-to-do family as well, isn't he, David? Yeah, he can eat. Can eat like an horse. But he's a fantastic person and a fantastic... He's a fantastic human being, one of... One of the best kids I've ever met in boxing. Very polite. Uh, all boxers are polite though, aren't they? Yeah, I'll tell you another one. A future prospect. Well, one of the real guys are doing it, and he were training with David alongside David. And he is a future prospect. He could have put his ears down to it. And that was that uh, Logan. Yeah. Logan. Logan Clayton, put it. Yeah. Logan who? Logan. Uh, he was his cousin. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Logan Clayton. Yeah, he turned up on that camp every day, and I asked him to man. He's not the boxing side. It's the, you know the what's that Robin Reed had him on pads, didn't he? Yeah, Robin Reed. Uh, Is he good on pads, buddy? Robin Reed. Did all come back to him on that pad. Fantastic, isn't he? Doing pad seminars now, isn't he? Go and, learn how to go, go and learn how to use the pads, Robin Reed, three time world champion, Olympic medalist as well. If, you, if anybody's better than him, they must be. I've seen a case of people saying that they don't come better than me, the personal saving. Yeah, you're doing well at it, aren't you, Bunny? You're doing well. So have Robin Reed said that, the man of Marshall and David, and even you and you are here. Yeah. And even Peter Jewelry, somebody asked him what I like, he'd recommend them. Yeah, yeah, Peter, Peter always brings you up, doesn't it? Now, you know these... These fighters today, Bunny, why are they all... 
18 stone mon monsters, these heavyweights, and back in the 70s, they were 15 stone, bunny. Why is that? Where's this free stone come from? Yeah, it's not what you're getting in it. Because not everybody's on gear. Is it down to all the the gear that they're on, is it? Or is it the food that they eat, you think? Well, I'm a great believer in something. As you know, I'm, I'm a vegetarian. I don't I've never took steroids in my life. If I had an egg, I wouldn't drink an egg. Don't you? Well, what do you do? Drink hot water? Yeah, yeah why? Who oh, won't oh, oh, You know, I was living in Singapore for 20 years. I, I, I know all them Chinese dudes and uh, things. So. Is that why they live long, Bunny? Yeah. The natural as it comes, aren't they? Yeah. Those are the poorly lazy. Imagine us taking that in Japan. It's got a full related to it. They're not like anything. It's dead. They're like, it's got a full. Yeah. We're going back to the deeps on them. You can get a physique naturally. You can't you can look like you're on steroids naturally. But these water, you watch them. Once they've had the fight, they can't finish. They're not muscling where you can't them. It's gone. Yeah. That's another, that's another bad sign. But we've got no more muscle for the week after the fight because we stop taking what you were taking. Yeah. But there's a natural David who we've just been on about, David. If he stops training for two weeks, he'll walk back in the gym and he'll look like he's never stopped. Because his natural has done just twice, stays with you. Stays longer than that, so. Yeah, because yeah, that's how a lot of people pack in at gym, isn't it? Because they think that they're not. It's going to take forever, isn't it? Cause it's a lot of pain, isn't it? If you you don't have an overnight, does it? It's more pain than it. Yeah. Is that why you have to stick the syringe, bunny, in your bum? People now, bunny, in sport taking drugs. So it's a problem, isn't it? Basically, it's a problem, then, isn't it? Ah, you wouldn't even have down the weekend. You could have down the weekend. What's all these unemployed? I don't know who's got what I've got job. He's in bed while he's done. The fees are out of the weekend. Heard laid in bed all day. So what do you think the answer is to this steroid problem in boxing, Bunny? I don't think it's quite a risky. I made the shock of the mind today, because that would be what you can't stop it, well, stop it, and it is. Right here in the Olympic one, but because it's a cheap sport, they're all steroids. Why don't they have two packages? Why don't they have a natural box? Steroid box? 
Anything. And uh, why don't they just let them all take it or life life bans? So even if you eat the wrong some if you eat the wrong food, it don't matter because we've got to do it because there'll be people who are casualties get banned, but there'll be cheats get banned. So life bans, that's my opinion. Because sooner or later there could be deaths on his hands. Now, have we already had a death and we don't know about it? Because the Dillian White situation, where they kept it all hush-hush, that, uh, that to me is not good, is it? I don't believe in life, man. That's the interesting thing, mate. Away they go. They'll never get another chance again. It's all over. They, they, they know what they were doing. The career's ruined. And they aren't ruined against it. That's the people with that. That's why they go up to bodybuilding competition. Trying to earn a few for like that. Yeah. It's just it's a it's a dirty, dirty sport athlete. Whoever takes whoever cheats takes steroids. Whoever ring the face for the kid what's not taking. It's a dirty cheat. Yeah. Dirty cheats, aren't they, Bunny? You'll have to send me a picture set of yourself to me WhatsApp, and I'll put it on the foot on the as the thumbnail for the video. And I well, I can put, I can call this video I don't know. A, a spoke to the drug uh, fitness expert or something, and this man. Do, well, this picture that I'm going to put on the thumbnail that Bunny's going to send me. He's oh, never man. took a steroid in his life, have you, Bunny? Hey. Who's best what who's best tra training you've done? Is it China? Uh, I, I like them. I like them with the Chinese kids I did with her because they're not doing. They same as me. We don't train together. And they live. They live on. Tell them, Bunny. What? What? Tell followers what he li what they live on in China. Vegetables, isn't it, Bun? Ah, uh, they're very good. At, they've got vegetables already. They don't want us to know about. What like? They've got all sorts of vegetables. What they can only get grown here. Never. Ah, they don't. Uh, they don't there's only certain places, I know there's a jungle in Indonesia where Singaporeans have put copyrights on it because it grows this certain plant just in, within a three mile radius. Chinese, all the people allowed in that three mile radius where that vegetable grows. We don't let nobody else have to do with it. We don't name it or else it's just there. Just the plant. Yeah, we're talking to Chinese, but we get. When you were in China, Bunny, right, obviously, and you came away from there, didn't they take about half a million quid out of your bank? 750,000 they took out. How much? 750 grand. 750 grand? This is a, this is a true story, this track. Right? Dennis told me about this. What happened? Because then you were in your place in Singapore one day, and all of a sudden you've not spoken to him for years. Dennis just appeared and put your window, didn't he? I was that. I was in Singapore, 
Ja. Da geht, da geht. Geht uns nicht mit dem Jungen. Das ist ja diese True Stay-Line. Das ist ja noch so diese White Man. Das ist ein White Man at Dog. Old Den Den. So, who were, who were little told you? You miss this? Is one of your missus Chinese or somewhere? Oh, she's a Brazilian now. Brazilian? Well, my maid was Indonesian. She's a white man. This is a white man. Who oh, oh, did you think it was, Bunny? I don't know. Straight away, you, you think, well, why, Bob? Really? I'm a white man down here. Yeah, but what? So, and it was Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> I was so bad, I had a bedroom window, I looked down, and Dennis walked in up and shouted, Fuck it, Clombo. Yeah, but Bunny, you must have been doing all right because even after that, I heard you were driving around in brand new Range Rovers at Lot in Sheffield when you come back. So, what? The, to go back to the story. You had three quarters of a million bank, right? Why did they just? Did, why did Chinese government take the money out of your bank, bro? It's a long story, really. I, I, I didn't have <laughs> a lot more than that in 20 years, but. Uh, <laughs> But what the point I'm trying to make is they can they can do that over there, can't they? If there's any problems, they just empty banks, don't they? When they send you to prison, they torture you, don't they, Bunny? Well, my mate, well, not my mate, an associate and a white beer. He went out for a quiet drink one night. I told him he was to watch his open finger for him. Very straight. Very straight. He had one too many. He thought his girl was a prostitute. Which which she might have been, but he's reached door in bar to try and touch her boom. Anyway, cut a long story short, police had come. They took him down a local nick. They ended up getting 18 months for it. And they still do strokes out here. They still do a white boot. Yeah, they still do. Yes. And he got uh, three strokes. And I don't know about, I don't know him, but his mate told me that when they give him first stroke, they take the back yard at next shop. They give him first stroke, he says, I took him back to tell him before. Yeah, I've got away with that, but what happened? It, it opens, it breaks the skin. Breaks the skin, doesn't it? Yeah, he uh, says, for two weeks, a doctor would come in and nip and see him. And he had all Mr. back and he was all right. He says, it's brand new. He says, as soon as he said that, he was in no pain no more. He took it back out for a second. And they opened one back up. What they say is, if they give him all three together, he wants to sell the last one as much because his back had been knocked. So he, he makes sure that they're healed up before he has the second one, and then they healed up again before they has the third one. Savages, so aren't they? Well, he's nearly not. He said, you hear me? He's not, he's not much crime in Singapore because last year, what did all wrong? He got dealt with the deal, and nobody wants to prove what he saw him to prove, so they don't do no wrong. So that's why everybody behaves of that. It's like Saudi Arabia, isn't it? They cut arms off, don't they? Singapore. Steal, don't they? Singapore follow our police, our law, and they drive on the same side of road as us. And the police, and they're very, very similar to us, but they're, they're not similar to us. Sort of, they've got better than us. Because they don't let you get away with it. These daddies have wrong idea. They get dealt with it. So look, they get some aeroplane through in some bubble. They'll get a two grand fine. If you do what? You can't chew gum. You've got videos and pictures of England. And go, go to a shop today. Yeah. Go to any shop, a betting shop, a news agent. Any shop that I want, walk outside that shop and look on the floor, what's all over the floor. Screaming, bubbling, it's yeah. just a floor all over. Yeah. Go to Singapore, they'll not find, they'll not find it anywhere. Why not? They don't allow it, they don't allow screaming. What, you know, they don't even sell chewing gum? No, you can't, you cannot chew screaming in Singapore. And if you do, if you get caught with it, what happens? Not even, if you are, even if they're chewing it, mate. They've got a two grand fine up there. It's all written on aeroplane before they get to the And what happens if you haven't got the two grand? Ooh, they, don't know. They'll, they'll, they can't leave country until they... They can't leave country. What happened and all, another one I'll tell you. Uh, they took a man a passport off him. So he's gone down in Nick shop. They, they, they were in court for something. They're only something to think of. I don't know if it was a, a vehicle. He, he bumped into something. Anyway, they took his passport off him, tell him he can't leave country till he's found this other kid's vehicle. So he's gone down to Nick's shop, he's still listening to him in England, said, 
by law, they can't take your passport off you. So he's gone down an egg shop, said to Singapore Chinese bloke to back a counter. My lawyer's been in touch with me today from 